Hey everyone, Spicy Sushi here. So before I get into the video, I just do I just want to address why I haven't streamed in the past week. Um, I actually came down with a really bad sign, uh, ear infection day one of the league, and it was actually so bad that uh, I decided to end stream early and just uh, not stream because of how much pain I was in with my headaches, and I couldn't go to the doctor till the Monday after the weekend was over, and so it. <laughs> It was pretty rough, but I got my medication and I started feeling better by like Wednesday or something. But uh, by around that time, we started theory crafting and uh, thinking about a method that we realized that if, if I streamed, um, it, it would have been dead on arrival. So because of that, I do have really, really big projects this league that require quite a lot of currency, like many, many mirrors. And because of that, uh, I, I decided to just not really make this strategy public for a bit and make money while I could while the market was very very uh very big and so I, I know because of that many of you may be thinking well how am I supposed to make money from this method you certainly certainly can uh just the specific strategy that we use will probably not be uh available anymore now I don't think this strategy was extremely like big brain um I think we used some clever usage of mechanics and we also circumvented a lot of the cost input that, that this method would require. And I'm going to go over all of that, but I, am re I was really surprised by how many people thought I we were exploiting. So a lot of people started finding out that we were, uh, well, I was, you know, I was doing this mapping solo that I was forcing harvest on every single map I did in Haywork Hamlet. And when people heard that, uh, like Path of Math, for example, he, he knew immediately how you would do that because this isn't like some unknown mechanic. This is very known methods of forcing the Sacred Grove. Um, but but e even people really high up on the food chain of Path of Exile, where it was like they were DMing me saying like, how did you find an exploit to do this? So I was really surprised by that. And because th this is not an exploit at all. Uh, I even streamed it for about an hour the other day and I ended up getting like a death threat over discord by some like bot discord account. It was really creepy. And I, and I ended stream because of that. I, I probably reacted a bit too harshly. Like I probably shouldn't have been that, you know, scared of that because it was probably just some like sweaty neck beer that got mad. I revealed their strategy, but anyway, I'm making it now. I'll get a bodyguard or something. I don't know. But anyway, before we get into this, I know not many people are playing the league and but i i really do think this video will be very valuable to people who aren't playing and for people who want to make a lot of currency in path of exile even if it's not this league but many leagues ahead because this isn't some kind of method that um this isn't like make a bosser go rush bossing day one go go get in a feared or go make a seven man party and do 100 percent juice delirious ports or something this is more just sitting down, looking at the game's mechanics, looking at the Atlas, theory crafting, how you can push insane currency per hour with uh, just critical things. Sorry, the audio actually cut off. But anyway, um, so yeah, this is very easy uh, content. Like you see, I'm on a five link. This isn't something you have to push high gear for. You don't even have to push into red maps to do this strategy. It, it does require a lot of early input, and that is what... Uh, our strategy involved the first few days of the league to be able to build up enough currency to start this, uh, but it, it, it does not require a lot of player power. Um, this three mirrors is purely from Harvest, uh, but there is quite a bit more currency that's built up outside of Harvest. Um, the crafter that I'm working with this league uh, to work on the projects that we have is an absolute demon. Uh, I'm going to go over later why I'm with a crafter for this project um, in, in the second part of this video, but I've never partnered with a crafter before and I've never seen like how these high-end crafts are made efficiently, but it is absolutely insane. Like You can show him an item on trade and he will immediately know how to make it um, cheaper than he sees uh, and, and more efficiently than the person who made it before and how to make it for profit. And so it, it is an absolute powerhouse to have a crafter on your side. Um, and so it isn't just three mirrors that we made on this league start. It, it is, we are nearing about a thousand exalts in value uh, for the projects that we have this league. Now, anyway, I will go over all that later, 
But basically, part one, I want to go over how this project began. So I was actually inspired by a YouTuber um, and PoE streamer named Larson. Uh, so this video came out in 3.14 at the beginning of last league, how I solo farmed a mirror in two days. And I, I'm not going to lie, when I saw this video, like I recommend you check him out and I I will put him in the description. I'll put the video in the description. But if you have not seen this video, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I, I have played Path of Exile for thousands upon thousands of hours, but everything changed when I watched this video because uh, Larson also used Harvest to make this mirror that he solo farmed. When And you may think that's not like that crazy or that's not that impressive, but the, the fact is, if you think that, you probably weren't paying much attention to the community and the content creator reactions to Harvest at the beginning of 3.14. Basically, pretty much every content creator and every one in the community, like on Reddit, on Discord, pretty much viewed Harvest as absolute trash. Even some of the top content creators for profit making just completely dismissed Harvest as completely irrelevant. And but and even me, I am guilty of that too. And that was what was so impressive. What is what Larson did? He did not listen. He used critical thinking. He used theory. He theory crafted ways that he could abuse the market with Harvest. And he, he did it. He just made a mirror using these kind of methods. So I recommend checking that out. But that is what inspired this because I watched this video and pretty much everything changed. I thought about the game completely differently. I just, I, I learned to not just listen to someone telling me something is terrible and to actually research it for myself because there are people that make bosses that, uh, sorry, there are people that make bossers that just rush fear day two. Uh, and just farm bosses for money. There are people that um, go do 100% delirious, like I said earlier. And then there are people like Larson who use uh, clever usage of game mechanics and just big brain strategies, basically. So how do you get to it, though? So I'm going to go over that. How do you force harvest? Um, so the thing is, is that when Larson did this, harvest was on the map device. And that's much easier. So Larson did... Do something that a lot of people can't do in which he completed like did his map completion very early on but in this league you can't do that it's a bit harder to think about forcing harvest and so that leads us back to uh, i think 3.13 so in 3.13 the optimal way for forcing harvest this was ritual league was to um well it was to get paths not taken master of the atlas and close allies and build up an absolute truckload of Xana missions. So the way people would do this was maybe like tier one titanium watchstones with increased chance for Xana. And you would go farm some maps, like an easy layout. I don't know, like maybe you do Mesa because the map boss is right near the entrance. You'd get some like a hundred or so Xana missions. You'd go to Haywork. You would run, uh, Xana has plus two to options. And then you would uh, get Xana on your Atlas and do the harvest that she gives you most of the time. Now, I hate Xana method. I think Xana method sucks uh, because you have to go do something that's not harvest. You have to. You might not get harvest from her. I don't even think if she gets harvest in different areas, you don't even get the bonuses from the atlas. So I, I was going to do that though. If we had to do that, I was going to do it. Uh, that was if it was my only option, I was going to do it because I love harvest. I really, really do enjoy optimizing and min max min maxing harvest, and is one of my favorite things to do. And so if I had to do it that way, I would. Uh, but th there is another method, and that is Awaken Sextants. So the way you would do, let's see. So the way you would do it, I guess, uh, if you wanted to roll this yourself, which is what most people thought we did, most people in the community that were starting to like figure out what we were doing, they figured we would do this. Um, take a, I don't know, take some sextant blocks like this. I totally screwed this up. Anyway, you have like pre-made sextant blocks. I guess I don't have one right now. Well, that's awkward. Anyway, you'd roll, let me put a blue on here. You'd put your sextants here. You would put your unique watchstone, and I'm not gonna roll over this, but you'd hit it with awakened sextants and you'd hit sacred grove eventually. Now the issue with that is pretty simple. If you go to this and you go down to Sacred Grove, you have a weighting of 100. Now, if you look up Nemesis, 
That has a weighting of 250. So this is more rare than Nemesis. And if you ever did any kind of Nemesis currency farming, you know that that is a very, very rare mod to hit. But this isn't actually an issue, honestly, because if you check out like Path of Master video, it, it is profit to do this. You would do these on unique stones, not Haywork stones. You would do this on unique stones. And whenever you hit a profitable mod, you'll just sell that. And so you'll eventually hit harvest. It will be very rare, but you'll just sell profit along the way. And then you'll do harvest when you get it. Um, and this isn't a bad strategy. This isn't actually bad at all. You will not be doing harvest much, if at all, but you will make money doing this uh, for sure. And that's what most people thought we did. Uh, people that didn't think I was exploiting thought that uh, we were just rolling watchstones. But it came to people saying, but how would you ever do that for profit? And how would you do so many harvests? How in the world would you do uh, as many harvests as you did if you forced it uh, with Awakened Sextons? And that's the thing. Uh, we didn't do that. We, we didn't uh, roll Awakened Sextons ourselves. I'll show you what we did. We did that. <laughs> so people were rolling Sacred Grove on their stones as they were doing this and they were selling them for like as low as 35 chaos. Uh, and I don't have, I, I didn't take the picture for this one, but we sniped a few 16 usage. If you don't know 16 usage, uh, sextants that is from elevated, but people were selling elevated sacred groves, 16 uses for one exalt, one exalt. Uh, if we take the, um, <laughs> if we take the average cost of harvest for that, yeah, you're looking at, um, yeah, 0 0.06 exalts per harvest. And so if you look at exalt prices when we did this, we were paying about 5 chaos per harvest. Now, we made a lot of money per harvest. I will tell you that right now. Uh, and we'll go over the breakdown of how many harvests we did and the profit and where that came from. But there was quite a lot of money made through this method. And that is an absurd deal. And so we put these up on live search. We uh, put these on live search for, for uh, like a day before I went into harvest and the day before. And this is what we ended up with. So, yeah. So we had a lot of harvest to do. And I'm not going to lie. This was not a casual way that I made money here. This was absolute turbo farming. Uh, basically, I would do nothing. I actually built my build. Shout out to Mr. Khan, actually. Uh, originally, when I was doing this method, I changed my character to like half hybrid lab farming gear. I would run into the map, find the harvest, go in, do weapon swap back to my gear, do the harvest monsters, and leave. And that was it. So, a, a lot of harvest. And, uh, yep, that's the method. So, if, if you're wondering how we did it, that's it. Uh, but anyway, I am going to go over in the video a lot of other stuff. So, if you're here for that, that's how we did it. That's the secret. Uh, that's how we forest harvest every map and did it cheaply. But anyway... Next part of this video, I do want to go over um, why we did harvest, uh, what was the, or actually, sorry, how we optimize harvest and how we made three mirrors. Because a lot of people were like, how do you make that much money from harvest though? Because I haven't explained that. But anyway, if you know my content from Ultimatum, uh, you'll know that I did a harvest challenge. I did, I made a mirror in 30 hours. And if you were there along that journey, uh, you probably realized that I had to do a lot of trading. And I have never played a game where something that is meant to be a small part of the game is such an absolute chore and an absolute source of pain and anguish as much as it is trading in Path of Exile. So when I did my harvest in 30, a uh, mirror in 30 hours, I was buying bases nonstop because I would hit bases often. I had to completely drop some crafts because they were just too tedious to set up again. And I also had to drop a lot of crafts because a lot of people were jumping onto markets that I was doing. So I was only able to do about half of, or only about 60 to 70% uh, of the crafts that Harvest offers. So what was my main goal? My main goal was to get a trader. And my friend was is actually wanting to do lab running like later in the league. And he agreed uh, to um, do the trading for this. So basically what would happen, he, he joined the guild. Whenever I hit a base, I go to for sale, I pop it in for sale. So for example, let's say, which one do I show you guys here? Yeah, I'll show you this one. So 
whenever I hit a cluster for sale, I pop in for sale. He grabs it, lists it. He was doing lots of other stuff, but you know, it was perfectly fine for him to do this kind of stuff too. And when he restocks my bases, buys me more bases, he plops it in, I pull it out. That is so, so much better for my sanity. And it was totally worth it despite having to split some of the, um, some of the earnings from that because we still got three mirrors. So it, it was completely worth, uh, the, the, um, you know, keeping my sanity basically. So, and the second part was I wanted to partner with a crafter for this. Uh, when I was doing my harvest challenge and ultimatum, I noticed that the majority of the people that I was selling a lot of my bulk crafts to over time were mirror shop partners on the TFT mirror shop. And it, it's pretty obvious to realize if you look at their profiles that they are definitely uh, making quite a lot of money from when, when you're making quite uh, not so much as them. So I was thinking I'm selling these crafts for one exalt and they're probably making an average of four to eight exalts off of each craft that I sell them. And so that's when I realized, you know what? I want to be on the other end. I want to not only farm these crafts, but also make money from them as well. And so that's where the crafter came in. The uh, crafter that I partnered with, who he has made, you know, like quadruple my money right now, but it, it is super beneficial because he never has to go to TFT for crafts and I never have to go to TFT to sell my crafts. Uh, it, it, it works out perfectly because he has a lot of items that need to be divined um, because when I lucky divine his items, they go up in about an exalt in value if they're high rolled. And if I ever get augs, he can use them efficiently. Um, basically, it, it 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 works out really well. This is what you would call hyper optimization of the harvest uh, mechanic. And as a result of having a trader, I could just call out what bases I want. I was able to have a craft for everything. So here's the thing about harvest is that if, if you don't optimize, like the reason people go into harvest and they don't make money and they get frustrated and they stop doing it is because they don't actually realize how much optimization goes into this mechanic. If you are not hyper optimizing, you will still make quite a bit of money, but you will not make nearly as much because a lot of harvest is hitting big things and it is like a big dopamine rush when you hit that really good tier four seed or that augment. But there are so many tiny things that add up to massive, massive profit. Um, and so if you don't do those, you are missing out. And I had to give up a lot of those when I was doing my harvest challenge and ultimatum, but I was able to make full usage of those this time. Now, but what do I mean by that? I mean like this, sacrifice a harbinger unique for a beachhead map. This is extremely annoying to restock up on, but if someone is a trader, they can just get that easily, stock you up on these, you sacrifice these, get beachhead maps, sell them for 20 to 30 to sometimes 60 chaos profit. Hey, sorry guys, before I move into the last part, I do just want to go over this because I totally forgot to mention it in the video and I didn't clarify it earlier, but I did do times three mature watchstones because they definitely still stack. I'll go over that later in the video. But basically, I did want to show the time investment. We did 202 total harvests. We forced harvest on every map. And it took about 16 hours total in maps and 8 hours in town. This is highly skewed because I don't really turn my game off ever. So it says like 8 hours, 32 minutes. But it was really like, like for example, th this happened all the time. Um, where is it? When I was looking at it earlier. Like, they'll just randomly be things like uh, 14 minutes is just like, you know, taking a break. But where was it? Where was it? You'll see a lot of things like uh, 53 minutes. Like I definitely went out for a bit and I just forgot to turn off my game. So it's not going to be too accurate. I did not actually spend eight hours in town, but it was probably more like four hours. So it was about 20 hours time investment over the past three days. Not very casual, uh, but this was not meant to be some kind of casual farm. This is just me showing how we maximized harvest. But anyway, let's move on to part three. I cut it. So anyway. Uh, basically, the point is, is that this is uh, not super relatable exactly what we did here because this is a this is a pretty optimized setup for farming harvest. Uh, but you can still do this and make a lot of money. You might you will not make three mirrors worth of money, but you will make a lot of money. Um, and so that brings me to part three. I know in my ultimatum harvest challenge, I decided to give out all of my bases in a spreadsheet and. Honestly, a lot of that has not changed. The thought process has not changed whatsoever. And a lot of the crafts honestly have not changed. 
um, for example, like fossil rerolls and stuff. So you can definitely go to that spreadsheet in the Discord or I think in the video and find that out. But um, the reality is, is that if I give out all the bases this time, the market is killed for absolutely everyone. Now, I'll, I'll be streaming this on Twitch soon. Um, and so if you guys want to hop on my markets for bases, go right ahead. But it is going to crash the markets. But anyway, I don't want to necessarily give out my bases, but I do want to um, teach you guys. I really want to teach you guys. I don't want this to be just a video where I give out bases, you follow what I'm doing, and then you get frustrated because you're not making money because a lot of this is adjusting to the market. And I don't want you guys to just wait for a content creator to make a video on how to make money and then start making money. I'm really hoping that this part three of this video, um, I can teach you to where you don't need a content creator to tell you what to do. You can go into this league and with critical thinking and theory crafting, you can make money yourself. And so that's what I'm going to teach you here. So this is what you do. This is one of the, the ways you make money from Harvest. So we're going to go to Peewee Ninja. This is how you do it. This is literally how I did it. I did not use any other resource but this and pathofexile.com slash trade to research my bases. You go to builds. You find the top five or top four, top five most uh, popular builds. Let's say Necromancer. Uh, let's go to Triad Grip because most of them use that. So let, let's pick one. Uh, on Pee Wee Ninja, by the way, it, it tracks a minimum level. And at this minimum level, it's 92. There is a massive correlation between a high level character and having higher budget gear. That is pretty obvious, right? So let's pick one person. And it's pretty obvious some, of something, right? If you have a high budget character, you probably have Cluster Jewels. And if we look at a couple cluster jewels, renewal, rotten claws, vicious bite. Let's go down here. Let's let's, let's look at another one. What is this? Feasting fiends, renewal, call the slaughter. We're starting to see a trend, right? You may want to do a few profiles before you look at this trend, but we have renewal, renewal, feasting fiends, call the slaughter. Let's do one more. Gucci necro. Renewal, Feasting Fiends, Call the Slaughter. At this point, you, you, you probably see a correlation, don't you? Let's go to Craft of Exile real quick. Let's look at Minion Clusters. Let's go to Large. Let's go to Minion Damage. And, yep, yeah, let's look at these. So, we saw Renewal a lot, right? That is a Life Mod. Now, what is another Life Mod? Feasting Fiends. And what is another Life Mod? Primordial Bond, but you're probably not going to hit this too often, but you'll see these two together a lot. Now, the thing about Harvest Week 1 is that the market is absolutely insane. So, if we just type in... Uh, uh, pass. I should have prepared this before. But anyway, you, you want to do 8 uh, passive large clusters, by the way. And if you see this, it's 50 minimum item level for that renewal. So, we have to do minimum 50 and we type in Renewal. This is something you'll see all the time if you reforge life and harvest. We are already at, okay, so we're at 84 Chaos, 90 Chaos for having Renewal, which the base already is like 75, 70 to 75, so you've already made 15 Chaos profit if you wanted to do that. But anyway, let's add in that second mod. So the second mod that you'll see a lot is Feasting Fiends for being a life mod. Just having two notables we're at already at 100 chaos. We've increased our profit margin by 100 to 110. And so we're already up. Something you'll see all the time. We are at 75. Now we're at 110 chaos. Now it gets a little bit more insane when you add in something that you might not see often, but you will see sometimes. And if you'll notice, it has a critical uh, tag. Do with, with, with that info what you will. But let's add in Vicious Bite. And there you have it. So, there's a lot of money to be made from clusters. There's a lot of money to be made from a lot of different things, including fossil rerolls, all kinds of stuff. And the other thing I want to get into is that, yes, mature still stacks. If you're not using triple mature watchstones, you are missing out on a lot of money from harvest because these do still stack, and these are the best in slot watchstones, running three of these watchstones. And we have to give up one for the unique 
uh, watch done. But yeah, that is the thought process that goes behind bases. And um, that is how I choose every base. If, if a base starts becoming less, uh, you know, a, you know, uh, what do I call it? Profitable. That's what I mean. Uh, we look at, we go back to PoE Ninja, we look at the most popular builds again, and we pick a different cluster that shares tags. And that is how it happens. That is how you optimize harvest for the crafting side of things. It's not always going to be clusters though, but clusters is the simplest example that I can give for this. But anyway, uh, that is about it for this video. Um, I hope you were able to get um, a lot out of this video. I know it's not just like, here, here's how I, here, I made money. Here's how I did it. I wanted this to be more of like going over um, what I did. So, all right. Well, thank you guys. And I will uh, see you next time.